Sherrill. I'm 48. I live in Tucson, Arizona, and I'm a space scientist currently working for the camera team on the Huygens probe that recently landed on Saturn's largest moon, Titan. And I'm going to talk to you tonight about the Archimedes myth in the 120th scale model, his uh, death ray. Historians don't agree as to whether or not Archimedes even had the ability to set ships aflame out in the middle of the harbor when the Romans attacked Syracuse. But of those who do believe that it was possible for Archimedes to do that, one of the more common methods is to assume that several hundred soldiers equipped with large, flat, polished bronze shields lined up along the side of the wharf and were each instructed to reflect the light of the sun onto a single ship in order to set it aflame. Now, when the Mythbusters, Adam and Jamie, tried doing this, they discovered it was very hard to point a, sh a uh, reflective surface at one spot and hold it there. But, if you instead prop the mirror up after aiming it, it will stay in the correct position and you can go off and aim several others before this one needs to be re-aimed again. So I'm going to try rep replicating this myth by putting each of the mirrors on a little bracket that I can change both the tip and the, ag and the angle so that each one of them will be reflected on one spot and stay there using 100 mirrors and in the scale they'll be 1 inch by 3 inch which is roughly 5 feet by a foot and a half or so and we'll see if we can't set the ship aflame. We've got the first of the pieces that have it cut down, the hole drilled in, the support put in there. We can add in one of the little bolts. Screws in nicely. In the mirror. There we have our first soldier standing, capable of rotating to any direction and tilting to any degree to point the sun wherever we need to. One down, 99 to go. Now to make the, the dock where the soldiers will be standing holding their shields, I'm cutting up some styrofoam to make different levels so each one we can stand above the other and not block each other's sunlight. It'd be nice to have a hot wire for doing this, but blacking that with the old-fashioned way. problems, one of which is the bracket that holds up the mirrors. I drilled a hole in for the set screw. To make it easy to turn, I made the hole fairly large, but in many cases it ended up being a bit too large. So to fix that, took a little bit of Mythbusters spray release agent, squirt a little bit of wood putty into the hole, bolt back in again, blocking the other end so that the wood putty is forced into the gap between the threads and the wood. And that way, once it sets, there will be something for the threads to hold on to. It's a little bit past noon, which is just about the perfect solar zenith angle for this location. We're going to try the second thermal test to check and see 
how much heat we can get in one spot. Now that the mirrors have been is that the entire test stand, which simulates the hillside with soldiers and the mirrors on one side, on the way up here off the camera, the, uh, across the sea, the Roman uh, ships on the other side, will all move together as if the sun were stationary. At least that's a theory pivot on these bolts. We're installing all the mirrors and because I wasn't able to get it over about 280 degrees before, I've doubled the number of mirrors. There's something over 200. Small-scale solar experiment is set up with five of the six rows of mirrors aligned and as you can see the temperature is now about 500 degrees. Now that's not inside a glass enclosed insulated oven. It's in a five-sided open box of ceramic so the air can get there and you could reach in without touching anything and hit the 500 degrees there with your fingers if you really wanted to. And as you can see, there's nothing else in the way until you get to this huge bank of 240 polished plain flat brass mirrors, which is generating all that heat by focusing the sunlight. Now it is time for the moment of truth. I'm going to take this sample side of a token Roman attacking trireme, which has been covered with roofing tar to simulate its potential burnability, and put it at the focal point and see how long it takes to catch fire. starting to smoke. I can smell the tar already. Tar is starting to drip down the front of the boat. One minute, or at least it's now 1.18 p.m. I can see the tar bubbling in the center. Well, it's been 21 minutes. There's been a lot of smoke, no flame. But I've actually burned a hole through the panel. Perhaps time to try a different piece of wood. Okay, we'll reset the clock on a thicker piece of wood. It is now 1.39 p.m. And finally, with a little bit of help from the wind, we have flame produced solely by the sun and 240 brass mirrors and a well-aimed bit of breeze. Hello, my name is Mike Woodrow. I'm 48 and I live in Tucson, Arizona. I'm a space scientist working for the camera team, the Hoyens probe that recently landed on Saturn's largest moon Titan. 
and this is the Archimedes death ray full scale experiment. There are many historians that tend to doubt that Archimedes even had the possibility of setting aflame the Roman ships out in the harbor when Rome attacked Syracuse. Of those who believe that it may actually have happened, one Johannes Tsetse wrote, Marcellus withdrew then his ships, a bow shot, the old men, Archimedes, constructed a hexagonal mirror, and at an interval proportionate to the size of the mirror, he set similar small mirrors with four edges, moved by lengths and by a form of hinge, and mid the center of the sun's beams. Now since modern materials are much more expensive to use bronze in thick sheets than other materials, I'm going to try using plywood as a backing and sheet metal for the surface. On the assumption that Archimedes was a rather bright boy, I'm going to assume that he also experimented with various metals to find out which made the, the hottest burning glass, and would have discovered that the white metals were much better than the red ones. So if we know that tin plating predates the Roman era, he could easily have taken bronze and dipped it in a bath of liquid tin, but there's also evidence that a silver wash technique was available around the time period, and that's what I'm going to use in order to improve the reflectivity of metal or polish up and then put a silver wash on it to give it more of the light. And here we are at the secret base where the Archimedes death ray is being constructed. And as you can see, right there on the post is the secret construction plans for making the death ray. Posted in plain sight and not properly guarded. Now building a full-size death ray sure generates a lot of sawdust. We know how game it feels about keeping the shot clean. So time to clean up some of the dust enough for me to settle a little bit and some safer foot. We're proceeding next part of the assembly. Okay, building the inner brain structure with the assistance of Samson and Goliath. to make over Adam's design for the full-size death ray, instead of being a forklift to move around, I'm building a sand fort, which will have casters on the bottom, and a pivot point in the center there to be able to help building and aiming the death ray. I'll make it easier to move around. Full assembly, full-size death ray. Well, it's time to do the work on the actual mirror. So now we're packing the sheet metal, and then hopefully back up. So unfortunately, I would not come in eight foot by eight foot pieces. I had to cut into shapes that will work correctly in order to make grab what you need. Put two pieces together edge by edge and bend too much in one direction and another. Now that the individual pieces of the plywood have been put together and screwed together in order to take the one large octagon sheet, put the sheet on top of the framework so it's getting that look like an actual potential mirror at this point. Very pretty with a small octagon in the center. The eight pieces go up sideways. It'll only be attached to the framework at the edges and one spot in the very center to pull it back to form the mirror to make the variable focus. I need to do all of these secondary errors, and there would be eight of those. In order to make them adjustable, since it's kind of a hard to at this point, I'm adding thread rod and offset so that I can either tighten or extend them out in order to warp them in and out so that I can get. Just the right curvature, a slender curvature, off of the secondary mirrors, and hopefully a little bit of concentrated heat on the target, so that it will help set the world on fire. And follow up and do one of the secondary mirrors.
Okay, now the secret weapon, which I'm guessing Archimedes may have found as well, and that is to silver the otherwise somewhat plain steel. And the process for alchemy is to start off with sensitizing dilution to go on top of the pre coat that I put on yesterday and allowed to cure overnight. Leave the magic in. And the sneaky quantities of AB. This is focused on the primary mirror. Bring this in roughly half an inch. Should focus the mirror for 100 feet. So around her. Well, we're standing safe distance back from the target, looking at the death ray, and you can see it's definitely big, it's definitely bright, but I still don't see any smoke or flames coming out of our broken run ship. So I'm afraid this one is not quite ready to prove Archimedes right. Although I still think with best silvering and a bit more time and practice, I come a lot closer. Look how bright that thing is. <laughs> 